I wanted to do a quick video because um, last night I had been watching another video from a guy who's a pretty major D and D YouTube content creator, and he sort of was mentioning about like the necessity of playing online nowadays. And seeing as I've been doing it for two years or so, running games, I thought I might have some helpful information to share, show you what I do to run my games. Um, because it, the thing, the point was from this other video was that like this guy creates content almost daily for D and D, and yet he's not able to even get a game together for like a month. So part of that was seemed like his inability or in desire to like play online which i'll be honest i had never ever done it myself <laughs> having started playing D, D in the late 80s and a bit through high school again in college especially in third edition i skipped fourth and then kind of came back to the game um pretty late 2019 and did a one shot what i thought was going to be a one shot for some friends and family turned into now a very long-standing game that we play definitely well weekly and so i'll sh what i wanted to do is just kind of get into the tools i use i'll tell you what they are right up front so if you just want to stop and just go check them out yourself you know um what has been helpful for me to run basically a weekly game as few people as two or three is all i had for players starting now it's up to five um and honestly, I would say I could comfortably run it for more people. I don't know. It'd probably be difficult for them, but but these tools are really good. So one of them, um, I'll tell you all of them right up front. One is Discord. I would definitely recommend that for just the communication. Easy, free. Everything I'm going to talk about is free. Uh, there are pay options, but you don't need them. Um, but Discord, I would recommend for... You know, people who want to have cameras on, I think it's helpful because it recreates the sort of table experience. Um, this is a Discord that I set up for our game. This one's called D and D Metal Crew, which just happens to be what um, my players they call their their adventuring party. They kind of go by two names. That's one of them. Um, what it also does is it lets you set up chat channels so I can show them stuff. So what's going on here is this is the day of of, uh, of um, that we were going to play. And so I put a link to something, another tool I'll show in a second called Albear Rodeo. And then you can kind of see throughout the game, I'm uploading uh, pictures of stuff. This is Jarlaxle, who is a person they met. Um, here's a fantastical cityscape of a place they were in. Here was a building they were going to. Here's some of the things that the players are commenting on or, or asking for help on. Here's a link to another tool uh, I'll show you in a second called World Anvil. So something that they can go interact with, click on. And then they were having a debate about <laughs> whether or not to give one of their players the Sun Sword that they'd had just laying around in their, in their bag of holding, or several bag of holding actually. Um, and me being able to give descriptions so everybody's on the same page about stuff. So you can see it's very useful for them to chat, um, even though we're in a physical, like a virtual chat room in essence, but I can link a lot of images. So we do play theater in the mind, but sometimes I think it's helpful to sort of link through some of these things so that they're able to get what I envision things look like, or if I found stuff, I don't create any of my images. I don't create any of these dungeons. These are just great things that are just out there in the web. Uh, if you guys know who this is, this is a guy that they're about to start fighting and then you, again you can see me relinking back to world anvil so the point is this is really great for having a place for them to actually be able to talk and i can talk with them in a room i have cameras on some of the other players do too um, but the, being able to show stuff or, or share links uh, is very very helpful um, one of the other fun things that happens is they have their own meme channel so <laughs> this is them wrapping up last session where they were acting sort of like delta fourth stealth style going in and beating a guy so they're you know they're memeing away back and forth to each other while i'm talking through stuff or obviously they thought one of my descriptions was gross um so that's kind of one of the tools i would highly highly recommend the other is something called notion um so if you go to google type notion.so or just notion as a tool it's kind of a note-taking tool so what's going on here and i had heard about this and i would really recommend going to this guy's site if you have time sly flourish is his name um, there's some videos he has out there about how he's used notion 
And I will just click through a few things here to show you why it's useful. So uh, one of the nice things Mike did was he set up, um, again, he's he has a great book, which let me show you a link to it real quick. It's called The Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. If you've never heard of it, I would, I, I would argue it is a better DM's guide than the actual DM's guide. Um, be for a variety of reasons, which I won't go into, but Mike is kind enough to actually have kind of a, a campaign template here, which everything is set up. So the things I'll go over, literally all you have to do is click copy and it's yours. Notion is free. You don't, you don't need to pay for it. And all this stuff that's here is sort of interlinking web pages that as you think about stuff or you have ideas, you can just open up your site, type your stuff in, and you're good to go. So yes, can you do that in a Google document or a variety of other things? Absolutely. And I did that for a long time. The benefit of Notion, um, so you can see from down here, Mike has this whole campaign for an Eberron campaign, and you can see session notes here, and you can see all these different pages. <sighs> now, I'm not saying I would make use of these, but you can see like as a DM, it helps you to sort of keep track of stuff that happened over time. So for my game here, the metal crew again, let's go to an old session note and I'll show you like really the strength of this. Um, they were in an encounter with a woman named Baba Lasaga. If you've never heard of her, she's just a witch. Uh, they were contemplating going to fight her for reasons. Um, so Mike has a great template here, which like I said, if you have time and want to spend some time at the lazy DM guide, some of these things will make sense, but the point is, as a tool, you can have links to your characters, which I have all the characters here. I know what their passive perception is, their passive investigation, passive insight, and down at the very bottom, I have a summation, so I can very quickly go, okay, I know there's a secret door as a group they're walking around, and somebody has a passive investigation of 19, so they, you know, and I can go, oh, it's Wisteria, boom, good to go. Um, so it's very powerful to sort of keep the game going with ha not having to stop and go, Hey, what's everybody's passive insight or, you know, things like that. It, it gives me a tool to sort of go back and remember, oh, they know these languages. So if there's two kobolds in a library arguing with each other, I can kind of go quickly through here and scan, do any of them know that language? and then they would overhear their words or they wouldn't, you know, things like that. You know, they're trained skills. So if they're doing a skill check and one of the players, which some of them have never really played D&D before, um, so asking for skill checks sometimes, they don't know to add proficiency bonuses and things like that. This is a very helpful way to sort of know what are they strong at. And more importantly, what are they weak at? It helps me to sort of sometimes run encounter, so I, I'm able to sort of tool it in a way that um, would allow me to sort of Play strategically against them. I have the characters. There's NPCs in here. So when and if you decide to build people, they're all here. So why would you do that? So the reason why you would do stuff like that, like or villains as an example. I have villains that I'm working on right now, but one of the ones I've used a lot is Strahd von Zerovich. Um, he's this bad guy here. So there's links that you can make, and you can type all this stuff in if you want, or little as you don't. So I have a World Anvil link because I have something there. I have links to sound I've made for him. Um, and all these things right here, these are things you can just type in and then save links. So like if you want to get yourself in the mood or think about like, or like say a villain has sort of theme music, which I try to do. Um, so they know like, oh no, that music's playing, it's this guy. Uh, it sort of the consistency and the ability to do that uh, is helpful stat blocks so like for Strahd he has a stat block in a book but I think it's very underwhelming so I found one online or and or I could make one and then leave a link to it you know pictures for him I could download quickly and share in discord and then what the heck is Strahd up to like these were all his motivations so the great thing about Notion and we'll move on to the next tool in just a second is I can go into my notes and we'll go to an old session note real quick here that is the Bobola Saga one, just because I don't want to have my players look at my new notes. <laughs> is I can relink back to stuff by, you can see this word here says Exothanter. He's a guy that's a villain also. And the way you do that is if I wanted to include it, is you'd say at sign and then whatever 
things that you have already created, like Strad von Zerovich, you can click here. And now this will link back to that page we were just on. It's pretty slick. So if you've built stuff or you're going to do it pretty consistently, um, it's it's a very powerful tool to relink back to things so you don't have to recreate it. So if you if you were a pen and paper type of note keeper, you don't find you don't end up finding yourself rewriting things over and over and over again. And because Notion, the tool I'm using with Mike uh, so Sly Flourish is basically construction of how he does scenes is I can very easily build a session by the session note template here click on that or make a copy of it. And then basically for this upcoming one, which is right here, um, I can go through and fill in stuff. So I won't go into my next one so my players don't see it, but like review my characters, create a strong start. So I'll write something here and I'll write scenes and ideas of places I think they may go, you know, relink back to location. So you can see I could click on this because this is a location I've made in Notion. And then secrets and clues, um, so if they discover something, I might check it off. And, but you can see the power of this is I'm relinking back to stuff that I've built. And so it's, it's easy for me to keep track of who's who and what's what. It forces me to think about fantastic locations and NPCs and, and monsters and things like that. So I can leave links here. So instead of having to have a million tabs up, I can click on this and it's going to jump me to whatever I've decided to use as a monster stat block. Um, so Notion, extremely powerful. I'd say if there was one tool I would highly recommend is I would definitely take a look at Notion and I would definitely uh, take a look at um, this lazy DMs guide and look up Mike and see some of the templates he's made because they're extremely powerful. So the other tool, and you've seen a link to it a little bit ago, is something called World Anvil. The reason World Anvil, I think, is something that people would want to consider is it's a great world building tool and it's a great way to link back for your players to look at stuff and have a reference and frame of mind of who and where and what things are. This is the one I've built for the campaign over the course of two years. So as you see stuff and you don't think, oh my gosh, I can't, that seems overwhelming. I have two kids. I'm in my forties. I have a full-time professional job. This is something that's gotten built over time. This is not something that, you know, you have to construct. There's plenty of great, I mean, I'll be honest, like I'm playing in Forgotten Realms. So there's plenty of great sites out there. You, hell, you could use my URL up here and just use this as your air quotes world if you wanted to and add to it as you saw fit over time. But the reason it's a great world building tool is during games, and I'll show you this in Discord in a second, you can say, and again, I've never, I'm not building maps. Like some people build maps and that's great, but there's plenty of great stuff out there online where you can just simply download a great map like this and then add pins to it. Um, so they play in Waterdeep quite a bit, which is this gigantic city. Think in New York, if you've never heard of it. And all I did is downloaded this map, added a pin to it, and then it's building little mini web pages. So like I just told it, hey, go to this other map because... As you can see, I got pins all over the place because they're in this city all the time. Some of them are goofy places that I just sort of made up, like NPCs, like Weird Bottles Concoction. It's in a module. There's basically no information about it, but I've added a bunch of stuff to it. And they have a, excuse me, a potion maker in there who I just made up. But you can click on these and you can build other pages. So if you see like, you want to add more flavor and depth to your world that your players can go back to time over time. Um, it helps to give them something consistent to look at. It gives them more, uh, especially in large spaces like a city like this, it gives them a lot more context to sort of narrow in and, and know like where stuff is. The pink flump is something that they decided they wanted to buy a theater as part of a heist. We made it up. I put a pin on a map someplace, but now we all know that's where the pink flump is. Um, it's not in a book. It's in their game. It's no place else. But in this world, that's where that pin is on that map. It can also give you uh, great things for not only maps, but characters they may run into. Um, so again, here's Strahd von Zarevich. So from their side, apparently I, I have a broken link. <laughs> Let's go to Laurel. Um, 
So sometimes, yeah, obviously I did something to break the link so I can go in and fix it. But Laurel is another person they run into consistently. It gives her a little background, sort of public facing information. Um, when I'm logged in, I can have my own notes about her that are hidden away from them if I wanted to. Um, that's something that the DM on the DM side, they can also do. But for the players, there's a public facing side to this too. So it's great for maps, extremely good for maps. It's great for factions. Like if you wanted to have factions, they own their own adventurers guild, the sort of first adventurers company. Maybe they want to change the name. And I decided this was a great picture. Again, I'm not drawing any of this stuff. This is just stuff I find online. It tells anybody what it is, who's the, the leader, Jarvis Landry. If you don't know who Jarvis Landry is, he's an NFL player. I just chose that name. Um, and that's what I decided he looks like. So, so it's a really great thing for them to have context to their world, especially as people come in and come out. Like we've had players who did not participate in the first time that they were in Waterdeep, but now because they have done more quests for the Lord's Alliance and they jump back in the city, the newer players can come in here and kind of go, okay, uh, I, I don't really know who the Lord's Alliance is. And then kind of quickly read up on stuff. Again, this is stuff I just copy pasted into here. A lot of it. It's not... And it's not something I, I strategically sat down and thought about this whole campaign way ahead of time. It's totally session to session um, where it can become a great tool. If you wanted to, the last thing I'll point out is you can create pretty much anything in here. And I decided buildings was another big one because I had uh, the pink flump as an example that we had looked at for a second. Uh, Weird Bottles Concoction, again, a place that, oh, it's broken. I need to fix that, um, that we had sort of made up in our minds. But again, these are places that sometimes they're going to go back to or important places like uh, during the Curse of Strahd. These are some of these locations that are big, big locations. And so I wanted to give them a visual of it, sometimes a sound of it, and a brief description of it. And this is something that they can go back to because as the game goes on, the campaign goes on, they will often... <laughs> want to go back to places they're familiar with and if there's newer players or some of them were just you know stepped away for a drink or whatever when we were talking about certain things this is a great way for them to kind of go back to it because then i can relink it say in discord if we go back there for just a quick second you can see i'm relinking stuff up here to world anvil so that we're sort of using the same tool together so world anvil great for world building um last couple things D&D Beyond. If you've never used it, I would highly recommend it, not only for making your own characters, but um, for something I think is pretty important. It's great to have it open as a tab because you can find yourself sometimes your players like, I want to do X and you're not totally familiar. I'm not Matt Mercer. I don't have an encyclopedic memory of many of the spells. It's amazing that he can do that type of stuff, but I'm incapable. I am a dumb monkey. So a lot of times I will look up the spells alongside of it. There's a a game I run for teenagers, they are very, very new. Uh, so a lot of times they don't have any context for the spells. So sometimes when they're being cast for the first time, they none of them have ever, at, not, even the spellcasters never even cast it before. So uh, let's see, transport via plant, I think. Yep, there's a spell. So if one of them wanted to do this spell, I could quickly look it up and describe it to the table very rapidly. And more importantly, I can check on things like casting times, range, rounds, things like that, um, to make sure that like, say one of them is got their, I don't know, they've been gagged. You know, well, there's a verbal component here, which this V represents. And it just lets me know as a DM, like, okay, you're gonna have difficulty with this or impossible, or absolutely you can do this and the whole table kind of is on the same page about what's going on. If you're using another tool like Roll20, you could always display this in what's called a VTT, a virtual tabletop, by clicking on this, and it would spit out all this information to the entire online table. I don't use um, Fantasy Grounds or Roll20. I use a different tool I'll show in a second, so I'm not able to do that. But this is, again, I could just copy the URL and paste it into Discord, and we're all on the same page. The last thing I'll point out about D&D Beyond is I find it very often after about level five, that the characters start to steamroll encounters. And so a lot of times it comes down to 
a variety of things going on with monsters or NPCs. So sometimes I need to tweak them. So what you can do is you can create your own encounters in here um, and link to a variety of things that you're going to fight. I, I do that primarily in Notion, just to give you a quick sense of that. Like in any session, I have my monsters linked down here so I can click on them and I can see the page. A lot of times it's jumping into D&D Beyond. Um, but what you can do is you can make your own. So I'll show you this just quick on the back end. Um, Baba Lasaga. So we had been looking at her and my notes in Notion. And if I went down and clicked on her in Notion, it's going to jump you to this page. This is something I made, but I made it in D&D &D Beyond. So what you can do is you can see up here under the homebrew section, you can create monsters, you can create a variety of things a lot of times you can look up if it's a pre-made thing you can just type in the name and it's like okay here's a template for you and then it allows you to tweak it so for her one of the biggest problems i had with her was very powerful wizard um and she has a flying skull and a big house that she uses to stomp on people so really her her sort of air quotes tank is this house uh if the players could get on her they could have one shot her because her HP value is so low. So trying to be respectful of the fact that players are going to have a variety of ways to engage an encounter. She she doesn't need to be a meat bag, but her HP was way too low. <laughs> so there's there's a great table in the DM's guide that I would highly recommend if you've never, never seen it. If you go into the Dungeon Master Guide, it there's a how to create a monster, and it basically says, hey, if something's a challenge rating of 11, it should commonly have an HP value of X and an AC value of whatever. Um, and the reason that they don't in a lot of games, in a lot of the modules is because they go, well, they can, they can cast spells. Well, they have this ability. Well, they have legendary abilities and they kind of, they just make up basically differences. Like they will shrink and reduce things. I would argue artificially, they would say mathematically, but I don't think they could validly say that that's true. So I will frequently go in and modify things like this so that then when in my Notion notes, I'm linking to this URL, this monster that I made. Um, sometimes I will change your spells out. Um, one of them that I did was Strahd von Zarevich. Like he, in his, I think his stat block in the module, he doesn't have counterspell. Why? He's an extremely smart wizard. He's very tactful. So in my my version of him and the monster I created here in this homebrew section of D&D Beyond, he absolutely is walking around with counterspell because <laughs> he's not going to get caught flat-footed. So very powerful thing. Again, if you were using Roll20 or Fantasy Ground or other things, you could display this picture here. I don't need to. I just download it and upload it into Discord for my players. Or I have it in World Anvil as a character, or you know, just a variety of places. So, D and D Beyond, great tool for rules. I would argue uh, making monsters, crafting items that you want to share with your own uh, characters. There's some of which that uh, I've made for mine. It's a Blitzvolk. I won't go into this, but again, it's stuff that they can link to. They can basically put into their own character sheets because I've made this in D and D Beyond. Again, all for free. Um, last two things. I didn't realize it's going to take this long. <laughs> is Albert Rodeo. Albert Rodeo is a great virtual tabletop, a place that you can share maps and allow your players to interact with the world and uh, encounters that you have. So you can, it's, it's all URL based, it's all browser based, so your players don't need to download anything. So I'm just going to start a game. You don't need to have a password because typically what you do is you just share this URL because it's dynamically built every time you open this up. And the assets that I'm going to show you, there's very few that are commonly in here, but it's very easy to make your own and download them in. The awesome thing about this is I'll show you exactly why I use this. You can find a cool map online, save it, and then bring it in just like that. Like I just can go in here, hit plus, go to some map I've downloaded and just bring it in. Boom, done. That easy. Um, the other great thing about this, and that I would argue the reason it's more powerful uh, than Roll20 is Roll20 demands that you download audio. This one you can share audio. 
So they built this feature, I say they, it's one guy, and you hit start sharing, and then it allows you to pick uh, a window or a Chrome tab. Uh, and you can see here I have a YouTube list of uh, songs sort of loaded here. I could hit share. Now it jumps to that window really quick, and you can see this little square up here indicating that this window is being shared, and it's giving you a prompt to that too. Now, if I hit play on those songs, my players and myself actually can hear that music. It gives them a way to, to turn down and up the music on their side. Very, very powerful for mood setting, I would say. It's probably one of the biggest reasons I enjoy this is because I can, every single scene, have music going. If I go back to Notion really quickly, one of the things I want to point out in my notes is all these scenes here i'm going to unclick this so it's a little easier to see you can see a link to music city music there at the halls of justice there was different music here they went to laurel different music for her it's her th theme music they're in this xanathar's lair there's music for him so as the game's going on and i'm going through these scenes i can click on this and i just instantly switch over to that music really great for immersion um the other things that I would say was really wonderful about this is this: these tokens here are just pre-built in, but you can find any tokens online that you want to use and bring them in and put folders of them. So one of my players is a druid, which is annoying when it comes to the animal shape-shifting thing that you would have to juggle as a DM. Uh, if you were classically playing, classically air quotes, at a table, you'd have to have all these different tokens for potentially all these animals. Well. My druid likes to turn into a snake a lot, so I can just quickly grab these, this snake token, drop it on there, and then they all, you can see how close I can zoom in, they can all control those and do different things with them. So I'm gonna grab this and get rid of it here real quick. But I can have ones for my players. Um, actually, these are the players here, and I can throw them out onto the field for them to basically grab and use. Um, I've made an initiative tracker, which I'll show you really quickly. It's down here. This is what it looks like. So that say when they go to start playing, I can grab two tokens of old deer, put him on the map, and another of when he says, and I can just dump another token down here, and I say, okay, guys, roll for initiative, and then just grab your token and put yourself on wherever you were. I don't have to sit there and go through like, okay, you got 25 to 20, 20 to 15. You know, they can just go, okay, I'm here. And if they tie, they can actually stack each other on top of each other for things like that. Other things that are great about this, um, this initiative tracker is something I made. I'd be happy to share with people if they're interested. Uh, you can make you can make any token. So if I made condition tokens, because sometimes it's hard for me to remember who's doing what, but I can throw that he's paralyzed on here or whatever. Or unique things like one of the players has a special weapon that we've constructed and it's called Davenir. So when and if she does this thing, it's sort of like a hunter's mark, think of it. I can put this on a monster, and we can all know that, like, okay, she's got advantage on that target. So all these different, these are the different conditions within the game. You can build your own, like I did too. Bane ends up being a spell commonly cast, so I just made a token for that. Um, and I will show you in just a second how I'm making to tokens very, very quickly. Last couple parts of this is you can have Fog of War. Um, so you can basically paint an area or draw an area here that you don't want your players to see. So anything in that gray, once I click this little checkbox, this is actually grayed out to them, Fog of War style. And then I can get rid of it. So if you had a dungeon and you wanted to build you know, room by room, you can then go up here and basically erase it is what this sort of icon is. I would argue these tools are very intuitive. If you click on them and just spend a second, you'll understand what's going on. Uh, this hand tool is the thing that lets you grab stuff and move it. All the players have the ability to do so, uh, which is hilarious because sometimes they'll write their own notes about stuff or make their own tokens or images and bring them in, one of which is Vampir or Vampur. He's a cat that commonly shows up as a token because they just think it's funny, and it's a, it is hilarious. Um, there is a drawing tool. So say your wizard who likes to cast fireballs, in our case, it's Wisteria here. She is going to cast a fireball. So I can say, I want it to be red. I want it to be a circle because the spell is a circle. Um, 
I'll show you the measurement tool in a second, but we'll just go like this and we'll say this big red blob here is now the fire, the radius of effect for the fireball. Uh, when and if it's gone or we want to get rid of it, you can go to this eraser tool. Cone of cold. Um, what's a square spell? I don't know. <laughs> or lightning. You know, they can say that and then we can kind of do measurements off of that line. Very helpful, very intuitive. Um, measurement tool right here. Very powerful. They know how far they can move now, or they know the range of their spell is 60 feet. Really nuts. It's crazy. Uh, there's a pointer tool. So I can change a color up here, put this little sort of teardrop thing, and then they, they can go, hey, I want to go over here, or can I go over here? Can I see this thing over here? Um, or notes, things like that. You can put a little box here, type in notes. And all this stuff, you've seen me grab a few of them. If you grab them with the little hand tool here, and you see, it's, here, let me move the screen just a little bit. You see a little trash can that appears at the very bottom right here. And you can just drag and drop stuff into it to get rid of it. So great for maps you find online. There are some amazing artists out there that have built some just crazy uh, maps. This is an upcoming, I think, encounter. You can tell what it's going to be. It's going to be an undead monster horde um, that they may or not see. There's music playing already in the background down here. It's hard to, you know, this is the share audio link again. But then they have all these tools. They can maneuver themselves. I can allow them to see and unsee certain things. They have easy measurement tools at their disposal. Uh, we have condition tokens, and we have a great initiative tracker for them to use. And then, more importantly, I've got all my monsters over here. You can see folders of these bad guys that I can just drag out here. So, And some of them have names, some of them don't. So how I make tokens, we're going to make one real quick, is this. If you go to a rolladvantage.com, there's a thing called a token stamp, or you can just look up token stamp. It's tied to Foundry's virtual tabletop, but it's a great free resource that's out there. So any icon you find or any image you find on the web, one of my players is an example. She had made, they'd made their own recently, and I found one for a character. I'm going to start playing actually here. So let me just drag us off the screen. I could just drag and drop an image and it's in there so there's this up here top left it sort of gives you an indication of the shape that you would like for your token to have you can kind of get a sense here with this little flint thing i don't know what we were calling that this is the one i use for tokens uh for condition modifiers um where you want a bat circle or you want a fiery circle you can also change the colors of those so if the background is in border tent um, you can change it to be whatever color you'd like the tokens outline to be. That, it, that looks heinous. It's kind of got some blue purple going on. So anyways, we'll do that. You can also change the background color. Say you had an image that was sort of cut off and you want it to be like all white in the background. You can go to background colors, change it to white. And then the, the whole background is nice and clean versus how it was where it was like a block or something like that. So say I'm happy with this, I can also adjust the size. Maybe I want his face closer. And then once that's done, I just hit download and I just get a free ping image and you can take that, save it wherever you like, upload it into Albear Rodeo and you're good to go. So I had somebody who had drawn something. I said, hey, if you can share that with me, which they did in Discord, I quickly grabbed that image, came into this URL for rolladvantage.com at, at uh, token stamp. And I made them a token like right then and there. Very cool, very fun. So again, some of the tools I use, Notion, great for game prep and keeping your DM notes. Discord for running the games, sharing links, sharing images, uh, and just generally letting them meme at each other and having a good time. Um, World Anvil or the world building and sort of keeping a consistent context of what the heck we're talking about. D&D Beyond for uh, your own characters, rules, and any of the things that you construct yourself like items that you'd like to share with your players um, or monsters that you want to adjust. 
and then Albert Rodeo for the actual in-game music sharing and counter building, world sharing. Uh, if you just have a big image that you want to share like this to set the mood. Um, and for all their tokens, conditions, initiative tracking. And the last thing is this role advantage token stamp to quickly build tokens. So lots of great free tools out there. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. I know it was kind of long winded. I didn't believe that <laughs> it would take this long, but um, I love this stuff. It's really fun and exciting to sort of to use, especially for somebody that's been in and out of DM, DMing on and off. But this has been a really great set of tools that uh, I never imagined I'd ever use because I never envisioned ever playing online. So hopefully you guys found it useful. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.